It is no accident. It is no accident that the Bible says that after Lot was removed, the Lord spoke. There are some things that God cannot show you in the presence of Lot. It is only when you mature to the degree that you are prepared to remove Lot that you can listen to what God is saying because Lot is a symbol of your attachment to where you were. For the purpose of this class, Lot may not at all be a person. For the purpose of a leadership class, Lot may be an antiquated model that you brought with you into a contemporary situation because Lot is comfortable. Because Lot is familiar. Famil, 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 fa, 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 family. Lot is Linus's blanket. Do you remember Linus's blanket? He took it everywhere he went because it was familiar. It made him feel comfortable. What are, you, what are you dragging into your destiny that is a symbol of your history? And what can God not say to you in the presence of Lot? We're in a real tough situation because we have raised up a generation today who has no affinity to our lots. Religious leaders are having a real tough time evangelizing the world today because we have a world that has no appreciation for your religiosity. So the only person Lot makes feel good is you. This generation doesn't care that you can hoop. They don't care that you are articulate of speech and, and that, that you can roll your words like somebody out of the 60s. This generation speaks in 142 characters. They're, have we become good at something that the world doesn't care about? And if that is in any way the case, you have to decide, do you love what's next more than you love Lot? Or maybe you should stay in the village. The village represents all the people that you, i tell you what, if you get your cell phone out, I'll show you your village. That's the easiest way. Let me just go that way. Your village is in your cell phone. The people who get you, the people you talk to, the people you talk to them, the people who reinforce your ideologies, the people you complain to when you see something that gets on your nerves, who feel like you feel and think like you think and have the same worldview as you do, that's your village, that's your tent, that's your lot. When my mother taught me to drive, she taught me on a parking lot because it was safe to teach me to drive on a parking lot. There was no traffic on a parking lot. 
There were no issues on a parking lot. There were no police officers on a parking lot. There were no pedestrians on the parking lot. It was just a nice place to drive around and around and around in circles. It was a controlled environment. It was cool. I could drive in it, but it was a parking lot. Is your ministry a highway or is it a parking lot? When Lot disappeared, God reappeared. How hard was it for Abram to give up Lot when Lot was family? When Lot was familiar? What is it difficult for you to give up to hear God speak again? I don't mean this stuff we do this economy and I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about this this rattling, this this murmuring, this foolishness. I'm talking about this life altering word that comes once or twice or three times in your life that it takes that it changes the direction for the next ten or twenty years of your life. I'm not talking about does God want you to wear a blue dress or a white dress. I'm not talking about this crazy stuff we hear today. I'm talking about the life altering word that moves you into your purpose and into your destiny without which you can do absolutely nothing. Is there anybody in here that wants to hear God speak a fresh word in your life? Holla at you, boy. Well, you might have to get off the parking lot and get in the highway with the controversy and the chaos and the confusion and the honking horns and the road rage and I need some gas and I got to stop and go to the bathroom and all of those things that come up. You may have to move off the parking lot where everybody thinks the way you think. Everybody reinforces your idea. You may have to get in the highway where there's opposition and restriction and turmoil to finish your destiny. But I guarantee you, you wouldn't be here if God didn't have more for you than what you had on your parking lot. Tell somebody, move! You see, when Lot was removed, God spoke. When all that makes you feel comfortable is removed, God speaks. When you are pushed out of your comfort zone, you don't know how to do that, and you don't have any background in that, and you didn't get a degree in that, and you didn't go to school for that, and you don't know how to do that, and that isn't how they did it at your old church, and that's not how they did it where you came from. You can't do that in Charlotte. We just don't do that in Charlotte. That's the Charlotte. It's just not that kind of city. You can't do that in Columbus. You can't do that in Columbus. It's not that. You can't do that. Shut up! All those parking lot voices that are trying to make you stay in the village are stopping you from being the leader that you could be, that you would be, that you ought to be. I'm trying to tell you it's time to break a rule. I'm trying to get you out of order, out of line, out of fitting in, out of the clique, out of the club, out of the status quo, out of the normal. I guess you are controversial. You ain't moving. Get out there where they'll say something about you. They don't say nothing about you because they haven't noticed you. They don't know you're breathing. But you cannot leave the lot if you're afraid of the traffic. <laughs> can, I, can I work with this a little bit? <laughs> you see, our problem even in our church is that we have people who build these little kingdoms. 
even in our local church, they build these little kingdoms. I've been the president of the Frying Fish Committee since the Vietnam War. And, and they, and, 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 and <laughs> they, 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 they have these little, little bitty empires. It may not be but five people, but they're little empires. And they're, they're these little bitty gods over these little bitty groups of people. And you can always tell them because when you're preaching or teaching, they can't say amen till they look over at so and so. And if so and so doesn't get up, they don't, oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. Let me try to talk to you. They have these little clicks and while you're trying to preach or trying to teach, they're rolling out the text and Betty to see what Betty says about it. They don't have the courage to have their own mind. They don't have the courage to think their own thought. They are controlled by these little Hitlers. These little Adolf Hitlers that you put in positions before you knew what you were doing and you don't have the courage to remove them and now they have control towers (laughs) and you spend all of your energy breaking up fights in your church and you think that's leadership that's not leadership that's babysitting it's gonna get rough it's gonna get rough it's gonna get rough it's gonna get rough And so what they do, these little, little emperors (laughs) give out prophecies in the bathroom of the church, meet people on the parking lot and tell them, there, that's what he said, but let me tell you what the Lord spoke to me. Touch your neighbor and say, when Lot leaves... God will speak. When Lot leaves, God will speak. When Lot leaves, God will speak. Get rid of Lot. I know Lot baked you the first pound cake when you started the church. I know Lot brought you the first blanket when your baby was cold. I know Lot is familiar. I know Lot is family. I know Lot looks like something that makes you think of home. But Lot has set up a control tower in your leadership that is counterproductive to moving the thing forward. And you have to be man enough or woman enough to let Lot Because when Lot leaves, when Lot leaves, God will speak. When Lot leaves, God will speak. When Lot leaves, that's a prophetic word to somebody. I can't hardly get off it. When Lot leaves, God will speak. When Lot leaves, God will speak. You've been running around, running. Can you imagine Abraham hadn't heard from God for years at this point? And he said, wonder why I haven't heard from God. I've been waiting on a word from God. When is God going to speak again? When is the glory going to fall like it used to fall? When is God? The problem is not with God, Abram. It's with Lot. And if you don't believe that the people you have with you affects your leadership, ask Joshua about Achan. What you won't kill will kill you. Ooh, I'm preaching. God then appears and gives Abram the greatest leadership class I have ever heard. He says, first of all, look. Vision. Vision. Look out. Vision out. Is most of your energy spent 
looking in looking in or looking out there's a reason that as Moses got older he went higher he stopped walking with the people he stopped walking in front of the people he ended up walking above the people he climbs up on the mountaintop and he finds out I'm far more effective as a leader when I'm looking out than I am when I'm looking around look out from where you are so we just got rid of where you were now God says look out from where you are so a third of you just died with where you were and now God says look out from where you are look out from where you are look out from where you are deals with global vision you don't need a vision you can afford You don't need a vision you can pay for. You don't need a vision that you can see your way clear and it's within your skill set and everything is fine and you can see yourself doing. You need a ridiculous. If you want God to go with you, God tells one prophet, he says, okay, I'll sit in the rain, but your, your little valley is not deep enough for what I want to give you. Dig ditches in the valley. He said, God said, make it more impossible. Make it so impossible that when I do it, everybody will know that it was me that did it. I don't want you to have a vision that you can pay for because then they'll say it's you. I want you to have a vision that's so far beyond you that they will know that if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, you would have been swallowed up. You're asking God to send you gifted and talented people. Why? For a museum? You need a vision that draws gifted and talented people where they can envision themselves serving your vision. You need a vision that demands resources. I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about smart. I'm talking about tenacious. I'm talking about gifted people can see themselves following you because your vision is large enough to make room. Not your neighbor say make room. For the people that's coming, for the talent that's coming, for the money that's coming, for the favor that's coming, for the opportunities that's coming. Your tip will not demand a following because there is no room in your little tent for who God would send to help you if your vision were beyond you. You need a vision that's beyond you. David says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. In David's day, they had ankle lamps. They used them at night. And an ankle lamp would light up the ground right in front of you. And you can read the word and it will illuminate what is right in front of you. But in order to get a vision of what is way down the road, you need to get a vision from God that is so far beyond you that God demands you to look out from where you are. Everything you are praying about is about where you are. Everything you are worried about is about where you are. Everything that keeps you up at night is about where you are. God is not concerned about where you are. God is concerned about where you're going. God didn't come into your life to sit in a parked car with you while you discuss the climate where you are. The reason God is not answering you about where you are is because God is trying to point you to where you are going. Can I go deeper? God says, look out from where you are. I want you to get a vision beyond you. 
A vision beyond your resources. A vision beyond your skill set. A vision beyond your talent. A vision that demands discipleship. A vision that draws together a board that you couldn't put together by yourself. A vision that develops a team in order to accomplish. Happy for all you've done by yourself. Wonderful. That's great. But for what God is about to do, you're going to need a team committed to excellence, ready to put their shoulders to the plow, ready to work in your behalf, happy for what you were able to do on your own. But for where God is about to take you now, you need to amass and assemble a team of people who are gifted in places that you are not gifted if you are comfortable enough to allow gifted people to walk beside you without your ego Oh, it's going to get tough. It's going to get tough in here. Look out from where you are. Which way do you want me to look, Lord? Which way are you going to which way are you going to give me? Which direction do you want me to go? Shut up, Abram. I'm trying to give you all of it. The north, the south, the east, and the west, the north, the south, the east, and the west, the north, the south, the east, and the west, the north, the south, the east, and the west. See, people will try to lock you down to one thing. Oh, you're a Baptist church. Oh, you're a Pentecostal church. Oh, you're a word church. Oh, you're a shouting church. No, we're the north, the south, the east, and the west. The north, the south, the east, and the west. The north, the south, the east, and the west. The north, the south, the east, and the west. I can't hear you. What? 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 Say it again. What? Say it again, say it again. What? Yeah. What you gonna take? What? What? What you gonna do in your city? What? 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 You can't hold me. You can't block me. You can't buy me. What? What? Give him a praise. Your ministry needs to show up everywhere. Your ministry doesn't just need to go to church. They that are not sick don't need a physician. Your ministry needs to go to jail. It needs to go to the nursing home. It needs to go into the shelters. It needs to go into all the world. Your church needs to be worldly. Bishop Jakes just told the church to be worldly. Yes, I did. I just told you your church needs to be worldly. You look like church folks. You dress like church folks. You talk like church folks. And you wonder why the world isn't coming? They think you're weird. They think you're strange on the beach with your skirt and your tennis shoes on. It's August. They don't think you're holy. They think you're crazy. You need to be in media. You need to be in business. You need to be in leadership. You need to be in politics. You need to be in government. You need to be in the north, the south, the east, and the west. You need to be in the school systems. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You need to be in all the world. Your ministry needs to go into all the world. You're trying to figure out which direction God is saying all directions. The north, the south, the east, and the west. The north, the south. The east and the west said, what? Yes. Say it again. 
Now, what we are talking about, sit down, I'm just talking, I'm not trying to preach. <laughs> what we are talking about is 360 degree thinking. A mind that thinks 360. Not 180. Not 90. 360. Well, I'm here. I'm not a pastor. I'm an auxiliary leader. I'm still talking to you. If you're an auxiliary leader and all you think about is your auxiliary and you don't understand how your auxiliary fits into the topography of the total vision of the house. If you're making decisions and you don't understand what other auxiliary leaders need to know that decision, who needs to get an email, who needs to get a directive, if you're making isolated decisions without a 360 approach to leadership, your church is spending more money over mistakes, bad communication, memos they didn't get, emails they didn't get, because you are working in a vacuum. You are working in a vacuum. You are working in isolation. And that's why you're having a problem. The pastor appointed you because you're good at it before he knew that you couldn't get along with anybody. And now the fact that you are good at it does not cover for the fact that you can't get along with the other leaders in the church that makes it necessary for them to be a team. You want to be a star player on a football field by yourself. You're smart. But you're not nice. And the reason that, 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 that you're not growing is, is, is the difference between getting a permit from the city to build a building and going to the planning and zoning committee. The permit from the city is based on the codes in the city that you meet the standard that is necessary for the building. A permit from the city embraces the strength of the infrastructure of the building itself. The planning and zoning committee deals with how does this building fit in the community. You're trying to build a great church, but how does it fit in the community? You know a lot of preachers, but how do you fit in the community? you got a great choir, but nobody can work with you. Nobody can talk to you. Nobody can interact with you. How do you fit in the community of your local church? Great leadership is, yes, it is certainly about building locally. But it is also about thinking globally. I don't care how good you are at what you do. If you can't get along with the other people I have, I can't use you. It's not that I don't like you. I like you. I love you. But I can't use you because you don't know how to work outside of your tent, your tribe. You can only get along with people who think like you. You don't know how to work with other types of people, which has limited our church to being a family because we can only draw people who are familiar and we can't be a holy nation because you don't have a global view. I can only get people to stay in the church who have the same DNA and everybody else you run them off because they are not familiar because you have never looked out from where you are wow I can tell I'm doing good when you get quiet when you shout, I'm hitting all the stuff you already know. When you get quiet, that means that knife cuts so deep you can't breathe. <laughs> this is when you know you're teaching real good, when people start saying, Lord, is it I? When Jesus said, one of you is the devil, nobody start dancing. 
Every disciple knew that he could potentially be what Jesus described or he wouldn't have asked, Lord, is it I? And if you're sitting here and you're not examining yourself, maybe you are Judas. Because every other disciple ought to be asking himself, is there any way that what Bishop Jakes is teaching could apply to me? Is there any way that I have been too narrow and ran away from me, people that God sent to help me, because I didn't have the elasticity of will to be able to work with other types of people that were not familiar to me? Am I only working with a whole department full of lots? Because they're kin to you, and they look like you, and they speak like you, and they dress like you, and they hold your worldview, and they hold your values. And that's why your church, or your ministry, or your department, or your choir is stuck. Because you only sing songs you like. One of the greatest mistakes a businessman can make is to assume that the customers are all like him. Then you only stock the shelf with what you like. There's a reason we got Korean people selling black hair care products. <laughs> they don't use it, but they sell it. It's not about your choice of music or what you like. If you are in that city, you have to meet the needs of where God puts you. But your limited perspective about what you're doing is stunting the growth of the movement because you're only saying what you like. And you only draw who's like you. And the rest of the community goes to hell because you won't look out from where you are. If God sent you to that city, He didn't just send you to black folks. If God sent you to that city, He didn't just send you to white folks. If God sent you to that city, he just didn't send you to Latino folks. There are other people in that city that's going to hell. There are other people in that city who could benefit from what you have. There are other people in that city who could appreciate your ministry. And sometimes other people appreciate your ministry more than your people do. You don't know until you cast your bread upon the waters. You don't know as long as you keep the bread in the lunchbox. Cast the bread upon the waters. See what God will do. Get out of your comfort zone. Get away from your base. Get away from the familiar. Go places where other preachers don't go. Speak on platforms that other people wouldn't speak on. Sing in the mall. I'm tired of you singing in the church. Go down in the mall and sing in the mall. Go in the nursing home and sing in play. Oh, God. Then he says to him, first he says to see, look out from where you are. And then he says, rise up and walk. This is what, this conference will be good. Not when the budget's met, not when the last seat is filled, not when somebody starts dancing, not when somebody gets slain in the spirit. That's not what makes it good. What will make this conference good is when you leave here and you start walking in what you've been looking at. When you start walking in what you've been looking at, when you start walking in your vision, you can't wait till you get there to walk in it. God said, I want you to walk in what you see. I want you to walk in your vision. If you can see it, you can be it. I want you to start walking in your vision. Don't wait for people to name you that. Don't wait for people to give you the title. Don't wait for them to even give you the pay. If you can see it, God said walk in it. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody came all the way to Orlando to get this word from God. You've been waiting on everybody's permission to do what you see. 
You don't need a title. You don't need a paycheck. God said, I just want you to start stepping into what you see and just walk around in it. Get over in it and walk around. Touch your neighbor and say, walk in your vision. Walk in your vision. Take a walk in it. Take a walk in your destiny. Take a walk in your future. Take a walk in where God's about to take you. Take a walk in the impossible. Take a walk in the supernatural. Take a walk on the wild side of what God spoke in your heart. Just start walking in it. Now the folks you left back home are going to say you forgot where you came from. And they're going to talk about you. And they're going to be haters. And if you can't take that, then don't write this down. But if you don't care what they say or what they think, just just take a walk in it. Touch your neighbor and say, take a walk in it. Something is about to happen in this place. Something is about to happen in this place. Nearly 10,000 people are starting to walk in another dimension. Nearly 10,000 people are starting to walk in global consciousness of what God is about to do next. Walk in it. Get up and walk in it right now. Walk in it right now. Walk in what you see. Walk in what you believe. Walk in what God called you to do. Walk in the supernatural. Walk in the invisible. Walk in it. Try it on. Get out of your comfort zone. Go walk on the property. Go walk in the building. Sit in the office. Go walk in it. And while you're walking, God said, everywhere your feet trod, everything you step on, God said, I'm going to give it to you. Somebody in this place, take a walk right now. I'm walking in my future. I'm walking in my destiny. I'm walking in my books and my CDs. I'm walking in my properties and my business. I'm walking in the missions field. I'm walking in the nursing home. I'm walking in my children for unwed mothers. I'm going to walk in it. I don't have the money, but I'm going to walk in it. Every person you see moving, every person you see moving, Tell him God's going to give it to you. He said, if you move in it, Abraham, I'm going to give it to you. If you move in it, I'm going to give it to you. If you walk in it, I'm going to release it to you. If you step on it, I'll work out the money. If you step on it. Twenty fifteen. It's your year to move in your vision, to move in your city, to move in your community. I can't hear you. The north, the south, the east, and the west. The north, the south. Say it again. Yes. What? 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 Say it again. Give it praise. Take over your country. Take it over. Take over your city. Take over your neighborhood. Drive the drug dealers out. Possess the land. Go back and take what the enemy stole. Hallelujah! It's time for God to arise and for the enemies to be scattered. For the next three minutes, I want everything in here to give God a... What? 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 Say it again. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Woo! Talk to me, people. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me, people. Talk to me. What is yours? What is yours? What is yours? Which part of it? Which side of it? Yes! Say it again! What did God say? What did God say? What is God's word to you? What did it tell you? Yes! What did it tell you? Give him a praise! As I close, As I close, I want you to understand something. Look at me. Everybody look at me. The word of the Lord to you is to go global. To get beyond your tent and go global. This will not be that. This is not a bigger version of that. This is a new thing. It's not family, it's not familiar, this is a new thing. The word of the Lord to you is to go global. I want you to hear this because this is my last thing, we're going to pray and I'm going to let you go. The word is to you, but it is not for you. The word of the Lord is to you, but it is not for you. It is to you, but it is for your seed. It is to you, and it is for your seed. Your seed shall be like the stars of heaven. Your seed shall be as the sands of the earth. Through your seed shall all nations, all nationalities of the earth shall be blessed. And what I'm trying to tell you is the most amazing thing, Bishop, is I realized that all the while Abram was in the tent, The land was waiting on him. The north, the south, the east, and west was waiting on him to look out from where he was. That his descendants were depending on him. That he would look out from where he was. That they would not inherit your fear. That they would not inherit your intimidation. That they would have a bigger world view than yours. God had to move Abram to move Abram's seed. It was to him, but it was not for him. The word that the Lord is giving to you is not for you. It's for all the people who are waiting for you outside of your tent, outside of your territory, outside of your denomination, 
outside of your affiliation, outside of your familiars, outside of your ordinary, the world is waiting on you to get rid of your lot and remove your tent. When the Bible says that Abram removed his tent and went to Mamre, Mamre is Hebrew for oak trees. God said, I want you to move into a shady place that's high and lifted up. I have a place prepared for you. And not only for you, but for your children and for your children's children. I am going to release. I feel a generational blessing about to be released in this place. Not a generational curse. I said a generational blessing is about to be released in this place. It will come upon you and upon your children and upon your children's children. And not just your natural children, your spiritual children, your sons in the faith, your daughters in the faith are going to step in the glory of what you built because you got out of your tent. Lift your hands up. The glory of the Lord is coming in this place. The glory of the Lord is stirring you right now. The glory of the Lord is demanding that you enlarge your dwelling place, that you move out of your familiar the glory of the Lord is rebuking small-mindedness and narrowness and territorialism and egotism and all of those things that have locked you down to a small place. I rebuke the spirit of frustration. I rebuke the spirit of frustration. This is no time to be frustrated. This is a time to walk in your vision, walk in your gifting, walk in your anointing, walk in the unction of the Holy Ghost. When this meeting is over, everything up under your leadership is going to move forward. Get ready for a move. Get ready for a shift. Get ready for a change. Something is about to happen. Your sons and your daughters shall be blessed. Join hands with someone right now. I've got to close. I'm out of time. The anointing of God is in this room. The Spirit of God is moving in this place. The Spirit of God is in this place. The Spirit of God is in this place. You're going to have to think global. You're going to have to think global. You can't have that narrow-mindedness. You can no longer prepare a sermon with you in mind and what you like to do and what you like to hear and how you like to say it. God is going to give you global opportunities, broader opportunities, wider opportunities, north, south, east, west opportunities, in church, out of church, in business, in corporations, in nursing homes, everywhere. You're getting ready to speak in places where you've never spoke before, to sing, to minister, to write, to build, to draw, to go into all the world, go into all the world, not all the churches, go into all the world. Squeeze that hand. The anointing of God is on that man. The anointing of God is on that woman. The anointing of God is on them. To lead and to serve. To build and to plant. To pluck out and to plant. To establish. To declare. To decree. Squeeze that hand. A fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. Is coming upon you now. You will never be the same again. A fresh anointing is coming down from heaven. And it's coming on you now. And it's coming on your stuff. And it's coming on your church. And it's coming on your city. And it's coming on your gifting. Squeeze that hand. The Spirit of the Lord gives life. The Spirit of the Lord gives life. The Spirit of the Lord gives life. Press down, shaking together, running over from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Everything you touch, everywhere your feet trod, everything you step on, God said, I'm about to give it to you. I'm about to give it to you. Squeeze that hand. Your children. Your sons, your daughters, your spiritual sons, 
your spiritual daughters are going to walk in the new territory because of you. Enlarge. Go global. Go global. Go global. Go global. Go global. Go global. Give God a prayer.